Hey, hey, party people. Welcome to Fashion Design Portfolio Skills video number two. In the first video, which I will link below, I talked about how many projects you need and what kind of projects you need to design and think about, etc., etc. Please go watch that if you haven't already. In this video, I'm going to cover the various elements of a single design project and what key skills you need to be demonstrating in each design project element. If you want to see examples of all these things, please go watch. I have so many videos, okay? I have the portfolio series. I have the critiquing viewers portfolio series, fashion design process series, um, watch me design a fashion collection. They're all in these playlists. I'll drop all the links below. This video is gonna be more like a listicle. Just basically, I'm just gonna be slamming you with like lists of skills that you need to be demonstrating in your portfolio. Now, I'm going to talk about all the parts of a very elaborate design project. And in your book, you're gonna need anywhere from three to six projects. Only one or two of those projects need to be so elaborate. And then you can simplify subsequent projects according to your needs. Let's go over the individual elements. Number one, your mood board. These are also called concept boards, theme boards, uh, inspiration boards, okay? And they're all about the same thing. They show your design direction. They show your mood and your inspiration, the direction you're going in, you're setting the tone for the project, and all your subsequent boards, your entire project, visually should refer back to this original mood board. It sh they should all go together and they should all come from this source board. What skills do you need to show off in your mood board? One, that you can create an interesting story or point of view. Number two, you can take a story and carry it through your entire design project because that's what's gonna happen at your job, right? You're not going to be presenting a design direction. Your boss will. And they want to know how well you can take a story, a design direction, and work it into actual clothing. The other key skill that you want to demonstrate is your ability to create professional, beautiful presentations. Number two is your market research board. What is that? This is the board, and it should be collaged with images and text telling us all about who your target customer is. So you can match the designs up with your customer. How old are they? What gender are they? What do they do for a living? How much do they spend on clothes? What is the price point of this collection? What stores would this collection be selling in? What kinds of events would customers go to wearing these clothes? Is it casual? Are they going to school in these clothes? Are they going to work in these clothes? Are they going to the Met Gala in these clothes, okay? You know, you're showing to hiring managers that you are thinking about fashion as a business, that you need to make money, because we do, and, you know, that really gives you a leg up on the competition, that you're both thinking creatively and also commercially, you know? Think about it as a business. You can also add some trend forecasting bits in this section if you like, but that I don't find always necessary. Three, you're going to want a section with your color stories, your fabrics, and a 3D sample board. And this section can be multiple boards, you know, depending on what you have going. You want to show off your understanding of color. Color accounts for so much of the buying decision. Think about the way you shop. If something is not the right color, do you bother even trying it on? or even trying to find your size? No. So your ability to understand color and create beautiful color stories is important. You need to understand how to put together fabric stories. You need to put together well-merchandised fabric stories that are seasonally appropriate. What does that mean? Number one, it means that at first glance, just looking at your fabrics, we should be able to tell what season you're designing for. I still remember that Calvin Klein collection, I think, Narcisa Rodriguez designed it, and he had chiffon skirts on the runway for fall, and all the buyers were screaming bloody murder. 
A well-merchandised fabric board is where all the fabrics all go together. They're harmonious. The colors work together, the textures work together, they all go together. When something is not well-merchandised, you just have like, like one shirt that doesn't look like it goes with anything else, and you have one skirt that doesn't actually pair well with any of the tops you have, okay? That is a poorly merchandised collection. You should also show that you know what top weights are versus what bottom weights are. If you don't know, go watch my Fabrics 101 video. I'll drop a link to that below. Also within this section, you should be showing that you know how to select quality materials. It doesn't really matter what price point you're trying to shop at in terms of fabrics. They're just good. There's stuff that just looks cheap. Just looks cheap. And you can find inexpensive materials that look quality for the price and don't look cheap. So even if you put together a collection that is really for like juniors, budget market, and you're not picking really expensive fabrics, they should still look quality for the price point. You should mark somewhere that you, you know, are purposely shopping this particular price bracket for your fabrics. That kind of thinking shows that you're thinking about creativity and business together. What's a 3D sample board? 3D samples are basically, you know, life-size mock-ups of design details that you've developed. These are especially great for designers whose illustration skills aren't super strong. And you might be thinking, well, Zoe, I don't have anything so special that people need help visualizing it with the 3D sample. Really? Then maybe you should go redesign your collection. And <laughs> does that sound mean? I don't mean it to be mean. I, I, I mean, Go push your design so that they're special, right? The fourth section is the lineup, and this should be your entire collection on figures on one board or two boards if you like open the book and it's like a cross. The obvious skills demonstrated in the lineup will be your illustration skills, and that can mean you doing them by hand if you're better with markers or watercolor, or you can do them in software programs like Procreate, Photoshop, Illustrator, you know, whatever you're best at. Really let those skills shine. The most important thing is that you are showcasing the design beautifully. If you do some vague, shapey, sort of bleedy fashion illustrations that are super beautiful but don't really show the garment, that does not help you with your book. You want your designs to be clear, okay? If you have a jacket and you put a ton of top stitching all over it because that's the look you're going for, I want to see all those top stitch lines on the jacket to show that look. If you chose a really great nubbly texture for a bunch of skirts and pants, I want to see that texture. I want to see how it all comes together with the other fabrics that you picked. Number five is individual outfit boards. One individual outfit board should have multiple figures. You can have, say, a front and a back, front and a side, front, back, and side. You could do two fronts, one being a close-up. You could do two fronts where one is not wearing a big overcoat over the blouse and pants. All right, so multiple figures to show off the entire outfit. And then you should include beautiful, meticulously drawn Adobe Illustrator flats. Showcasing Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop skills in your design portfolio is mandatory. Show it somewhere because flats are really what designers are gonna work on. These flats should be as technical and beautiful and meticulous as possible, front, back, aside if you need, enlarge close-ups if you need them, that sort of thing. And you may be wondering, well, Zoe, I just painted all these for the lineup and now you want me to repaint them all for the individual design boards? No, I want you to paint all the individual outfits and then I want you to scan them into the computer and make the lineup pages and print those out or vice versa, whatever works better for you. These outfit boards are really the deep dive into the designs. You know, the lineup, they're gonna show your illustration skills and how the collection looks together, but the individual outfit boards are gonna be like, oh, look at your flats. Look at how you thought of all these small design details. That's so great, you know, because it's really the small details that make you stand out from the crowd. Those individual outfit boards should also show that you know how to design on the round. I'm always telling my design students that fashion is more like sculpture than painting because people look at us from every angle. 
And so your clothes should look good from every angle. And so you should be designing, thinking about all the angles. And no, you don't need to put tchotchkes like all over the body. You just have to think, oh, does this back look good with the front? Does the design wrap across the side in an artful way? Okay? Thoughtful design. No coffin garments, remember? What are coffin garments? Coffin garments are when you only design here. All you see when someone's laying in a coffin. Number six, a tech pack for one garment. Choose a complex garment. You know, show your understanding of garment construction and product development and how tech packs work. So even if you're not in a job that where you are doing the tech packs, you show that you know what one is, you know how to read one, you know how to edit one. Designers who have a firm grasp on garment construction and product development process do have a leg up on the competition, especially those of you who are applying for positions at smaller companies. Designers at huge firms, they have pretty narrow list of tasks that they cover. Designers at small companies, the smaller the company, the wider variety of tasks will be expected of you. Okay? One time I was an assistant designer, that was my job title, assistant designer at a six person company. And so yeah, my job went way into product development and into production. And I loved it. I learned so much and I recommend that kind of job for a lot of you starting out in the industry, especially those of you who want to eventually start your own company. But I'm just saying that you need to demonstrate these skills if you want those jobs. Number seven, optional, but photos of a finished garment are a nice addition if you have them. Obviously here you are showcasing your understanding of garment construction. And as I've often said before, designers don't need to learn how to sew so that they can become beautiful sample makers. The goal of teaching designers how to sew is so that their understanding of garment construction helps them become better designers. Number eight is your croquis book. Croquis is quick sketch in French, I believe, and your croquis book should consist of all the designs you did for this design project. So this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking you've chosen your inspiration images, you've put together your market research, your colors, your fabrics, all this stuff, and then you start sketching, 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 and if you watch my Watch Me Design a Fashion Collection series, you know I did a lot of sketching, and I pulled out and edited and just like rejected a bunch of designs, but I still have that fat stack of not great designs. What I would do if I was putting that together in a portfolio book is I would grab that stack and, you know, kind of put them in some kind of order and then bind it as a separate little book. This is different from a sketchbook or process book. Sketchbooks and process books are great. They show the process of the designer and the way they think and how they got to the point that they did with the final project. However, croquis books are better because they show all the designs that you put together after all this process. They show how you edit. They show what you think are your best designs. Because they're looking at your lineup of your five to 10 outfits and they're assuming you think those are the best ones you did out of the whole project. And they wanna look through your book and it really reveals a lot about a designer when you see what they've rejected for the project. And then nine, last but not least, is your title page. And of course, that will actually go in the front. This should be just a simple page, a palette cleanser, a separator between projects, where he just has your project name, your name, and the season, maybe one image that reflects what you might see inside the project. But really, keep it simple. You'd be amazed at how many projects I go through. I like to flip through a portfolio, and then halfway through a project, I'll realize I'm onto a new project. Now, that's a problem on its own. If I can't tell that it wasn't all one project, where all your work is looking like each other, that's a problem. But yeah, get that separator in there. So again, you should have anywhere from three to five, three to six, depending on the size of each project, okay? Three to six projects per portfolio. So that means in your book or online on your website. And only one or two of these need to be so elaborate to have all the things that I just mentioned in this video. But keep in mind, whatever you emphasize in your portfolio is going to be noted. 
So if you have a lot of tech packs, a lot of photos of finished garments, people are going to associate you with product development and production and construction, which is great if that's what you want. If you're looking for a technical design position or something more in product development, that's awesome. Maybe you can show off your pattern making skills or showcase that you know pattern making software. You know pattern makers make more money than designers, right? All right, maybe that's what you're into. Those are the kinds of jobs you're looking for. So go ahead and emphasize those skills in your portfolio. Maybe you really love doing flats in Adobe Illustrator and you know you're good at it. So make sure all your projects have beautiful CAD work. There are some other optional uh, fashion skills that you can show. You can show that you're great at fashion graphics, which can be translated into embroideries, screen print on t-shirts, debossing, applique designs, all kinds of things. You can show that you have a flair for accessories design, shoes, scarves, bags, glasses, or print design. Some people are really into print design as well as fashion design, so make sure you have a self-designed print included in all of your projects. And maybe you have a separate little booklet that shows off different prints that you have developed all kinds of things, okay? So make sure that your portfolio really showcases the things that you love, that you're good at, that you want your jobs to focus on. So that's it for this video. I hope I went over enough information. <laughs> As usual, hit that thumbs up button if you learned something new today. Drop me all your questions in the comment section below. Please do leave me comments as to what specific things you would like to learn in future portfolio skills videos. Share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, keep practicing, keep working, watch a billion of my other videos. And I will see you in the next video.